Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Advertech Printing, and Independent Photo Imagers. Hello again and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. I'm your host, Gary Peugeot, and today we're joined by Michael Allison, the founder and CEO of the Adversity Academy. Hi, Michael. How are you today? Hey, Gary. How you doing, man? Thank you for having me. The photo industry uh, people who are running photo labs and uh, camera stores and whatnot are no strangers to adversity. But before we get into how your background can help them, can you share a little bit about how you got to be where you are today? Definitely, man. Uh, my life um, is about getting through some adversities and le- learning lessons from that. So grew up as a kid from Jamaica, been through some hurricanes, came to America, trying to live the American dream as my family tried to give us that vision of what that would look like for us in America. You know, it was kind of rocky coming from some humble beginnings. So we grew up in the projects and try, had to get through some of those uh, hurdles there. Mm-hmm. Uh, where did you relocate to in the U.S.? To Miami, Florida, man, in uh, Overtown. Okay, awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. And from there, uh, you know, I obviously went to high school in Florida, but I struggled a little bit when it comes to like the dialect in regards to speaking Pots opposed to American English. So struggle with um that transition for a little bit then sure. play some high school football i played was pretty good offered an opportunity to go to university of wisconsin but tore my acl mcl so um that's the that's the downfall of so many athletes is that <laughs> darn acl man so um you know that was that opportunity to go to college was taken away so i served in the military man um, one of the best experiences that i've ever had and you know when 9 11 hit you know i knew that it was almost a sure thing that I was going to actually go to war. So eventually I did go to Iraq, uh, served in Fallujah in uh, 2004. From there, man, I'm serving. You know, I, I got injured, lost a couple of friends while I was over there, and I decided to get out uh, two years after that. Mm-hmm. And once I got out of the service, man, I worked out on the railroad, became a train master in Atlanta, Georgia, and went through some mental health um, stints, uh, went through a divorce at that time, and things was really rocky for me at that particular moment. So I left that job and just uh, went back to working on myself. So I went back to school, got a bachelor's degree, master's degree in business. And then I I said, I want to get back into the workforce. So I took a job in Washington, D.C. and started working for the government uh, around uh, the Obama era and General Shinseki with the Department of Veterans Affairs. And did that as a project manager and a government contractor. So if you see some of these um, medical equipments that's inside of uh, the VA hospitals, I helped put some of those equipment hospitals for our veterans and left that job after about 12 years and said, I want to get into working with veterans much more closely. So I became the director at Florida Atlantic University, helping our veterans utilize their GI bills for themselves and for the dependents as well. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, now it's time to bet on myself, you know, and uh, I got into entrepreneurship. So I purchased a franchise and ran a construction company down here in South Florida and then sold that company. And after selling that company, I said I wanted to work on some personal development, business development, taking all of, of my business acumen, some of the struggles I've been through in life, and mm-hmm. apply that to the Adversity Academy. And here we are where we have uh, three different programs and services that are offered to um, individuals and business clients as well. Well, congratulations for just being here after all that. You've got monsoons, you've got immigration, <laughs> you've got ACL, you've got a lot, man. I had no idea they were going to hear all about that. That's awesome. Listen, so so tell me a little bit about the jump you made to entrepreneurship, right? I mean, because, you know, you, you had a, a probably a very fulfilling job, you know, at the VA helping people. And you said you worked there for about 12 years, right? right. And, you know, a lot of people would, be, would have been satisfied with that, right? They would have been comfortable just kind of, hey, I'm going to ride it out, a you know, government job. It's going to be fine. And, you know, the government always needs people. So kind of a secure environment. Um, what made you make the leap then to say, listen, you know, I want to kind of hang out and, or I should say, put out my own, my shingle and do my own construction business. What, what was that process? What, what drove you to do that? There there are several factors that tied into that. I, I found that throughout life for myself personally, once I've felt like I've plateaued or uh, accomplished something and there's uh, a ceiling there and there's nothing else to accomplish or there's nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. I found that I get bored, I get stagnant, and there's something else for me to be doing. Mm-hmm. 
And then while within those working confines, I, I, I totally understand the dynamics of, all right, well, I've learned, I've maximized my capacity within this space. And in regards to like anywhere mobility, if you understand the structure of how a university is set up um, at that particular moment, then it was time for me to leave and go do something on, on my own. With right. that being said, I, I didn't just leave. So when it came about a year and a half or so, I said that, all right, well, I have all of this uh, knowledge from the military. I have all of this knowledge that I've gained from the Department of Veterans Affairs. I have all of this knowledge that I've gained from uh, Florida Atlantic University. And then also within my personal life, I struggled a good bit of things that I had to overcome and accomplish. So mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, divorce, when it comes to uh, some things that deal with like your mental health outside of uh, the workplace. So like suicide attempts, alcohol uh, problems and things like that, run-ins with the law. I had some issues with that and I had to combat that, overcome those things, do a whole bunch of personal development for me to um, mm -hmm. get better at life itself. So I found that personal development and business development were all one in one. So mm -hmm. what I decided to do was I'm going to sacrifice some time. I'm going to sacrifice some things if I wanted to uh, get into this entrepreneurship. So I started taking a whole bunch of uh, business courses, business classes. I already had a degree, uh, master's degree in business, but I wanted to learn more so what is it like to actually live and go through the day of an entrepreneur, what they do, because yeah. it's more than whatever you just learn in, inside of a college realm. And I did that and I got to learn more things around what it is like to actually run a business. And the thing for me was, what is another opportunity where I could easily understand a blueprint of what is set up of how to run a business? And that was through a franchise, as in a franchise is already a plug and play. You just have to go learn the systems and the processes that's already right. in place. So I went out and purchased a franchise, $150,000 investment into this company and mm -hmm. uh, got that company up and running, got it up to $1.5 million within uh, two and a half years. And mm -hmm. we worked on this company, built this company, and eventually I got to sell in that company, man. But it was eventually me sacrificing, investing the time and the effort to learn what it is like to actually start running a business and then getting out there with my employees and like learning what it is like to like knock on doors, learning what it's like to help build build buildings look at blueprints, look at different sheets and things like that to actually know what this industry is really like. Right. So talk to me a little bit about your revelation that personal development can be tied to business development. Because, you know, I've talked to a lot of, you know, business owners and they kind of, you know, almost keep the, the can keep those worlds separate, right? You know, my personal life is my personal life, my business life is, is it? But, but what you decided was that, you know, if you work on one, you can work on the other as well. So talk a little bit about that kind of revelation, how that came to you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Photo retailers, energize your sales with ShareMe Chat, the proven texting platform. Using chat to text on your website keeps your customers connected and buying. See us at Pro and IPI to find out why dealers using ShareMe Chat close more sales without adding staff. Find out more at ShareMe.chat. I, I realized that when I, uh, when I got my first job working on the railroad, I got out of the service and I did not seek any type of medical help or assistance or anything like that for close to seven years. And I'm working on a railroad in Atlanta, Georgia, and I get a call around two o'clock in the morning. There's a accident. And I pull up and there's a guy that jumped in front of a train, a guy that was on drugs, and he killed himself and his body was cut in half. And I seen that. Mm -hmm. And immediately. When I was in Iraq, I got blown up by a car bomb, but my best friend got killed and I had to put my best friend in a body bag. Right. And that immediately brought me back to that. So yeah, almost like a PTSD type experience. PTSD kicked in. And all of a sudden, that kicked in while I was on the job. And now I needed to deal with that because from there, two weeks later, there was another suicide. Oh my God. And now that was affecting me at home. Mm -hmm. And for me to show back up at the job, I was not in the right state of mind to operate at my maximum potential. That's the first instant when that occurred. The second instance where that occurred was on that same job, I was married. 
but working on a railroad is an on-the-call job. So I could go work nine to five, but if there's a derailment at midnight, a derailment at two in the morning, Michael Allison gets called. He has to leave his family and go show up to the derailment and take care of that. So sure, that became an issue. And that led to my first divorce mm -hmm. because I was not home and I was not present being a husband and being a dad at that time. So to push that a little bit further, that trickled on where I noticed that this was something that kept reoccurring within my life, you know? So I went on to work for the Department of Veterans Affairs and I was excelling, doing excellent with the career that I was doing. But back at home, I noticed that I was not happy. I was very depressed. I was not dealing with my mental health. I was not doing some things within my family in regards to like being a dad and being a parent. And that led to my second divorce and even brought me to the brinks of um, trying to take my life, man, because I noticed that I started having all of these anxiety, depression. I started having mm -hmm. all of these doubts and started making like really, really, really poor decisions. And then once I started investing myself and working on the personal development aspects of things, I noticed that there was a turn, there was a, a transition, there was a transformation within myself as a business owner, as now I'm showing up as my best self within my job. I could think better, I could operate better, I could make clearer decisions, you know, so that also poured into my employees because they saw that from me because when you're in that space you don't really see it but like you're when you have people that's um coaching you and mentoring you or people that's actually evaluating and looking at you and, and mm -hmm. want to see the best for you then they actually help to tell you what what's really what's going on with you as well too man so i imagine it's hard to expect the best out of your employees when you're not being your best self in the workplace absolutely so you became a better coworker and a boss by taking care of yourself. That's right. Absolutely. So what were some of the things, techniques, or uh, workshops, or what that you first looked into when you realized you needed help? Were they like were they programs through, through the VA that they offer, or was it a class? What What were some of the first things you looked at when you realized you needed some some guidance? There were several things that uh, took place for me. The first thing was. Uh... I wanted to get PTSD, mental health, traumatic brain injuries, all of those things that was tied into that and understand what was really going on for me to even come into close to taking my life. Mm -hmm. I was on up to 13 different medications at that particular moment. Wow. And with that being said, I said, all right, let me go find the best places that help veterans that deal with PTSD. So I went to Rush University in Chicago and we went through an intensive uh, treatment in regards to what is it like that a veteran is dealing with and replaying and actually like going through some of the um, psychographics, some of the um, some of the uh, intrusive memory types of things to deal with, some of the neuro linguistic programming of what's going on deep, deep within your brain to understand mm -hmm. what are triggering you and things like that. So I went through that program there and really got a better understanding of getting past some of the grief, some of the guilt, some of the uh, the deep, deep depression of why I was going through things, why I was having some, some of these different types of flashbacks and addressing those things. Then I said, all right, I want to go to another place to help me like double down on this. So I went to Emory Hospital in um, Atlanta, Georgia. And then I went through the program with them. And what I really liked about the program, because I, 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 uh, I carried around a lot of guilt within my life because when I told you that my best friend died, I was 10 seconds away from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they died and I did it. Right. And I I went through a good bit of my life thinking that could have easily been me. Yeah. Or what could you have done to or help what could I have friend? done? Right. So what we did was they recreated my scenario, my situation, and really like drilled in for me to understand that was never my fault. Right. And I really had to come to grips with understanding that was not my fault. And yeah, man, I'm even getting emotional about it, man. But at that particular moment, man, that uh, mm -hmm. that really resonated with me to understand what was going on with me and how I was carrying around so much um, baggage within within um, myself. Mm -hmm. And the next thing that I did was I found a, a counselor, and you know, it was not through the VA. I w I've went through close to over ten counselors from the VA hospitals, and. Right. There's there's a there's a thing with like identifying and finding someone that you could communicate with, that you could connect with, 
and someone right. that really understands some of the deep, deep issues that you're dealing with to understand what led to some things, why you operate some way, why you think in some ways. Sure. And that was one of the key to find one of the, the best counselors for myself. And I did that, but it was outside of the VA. And they helped me go through a whole bunch of holistic things that I should have been addressing and dealing with mm-hmm. that led to some childhood trauma that tied tied to why I was dealing with some things as an adult as well, too. Sure. And then in addition to that, the next thing I did was I said, um, I wanted to surround myself with uh, godly men. So I joined a men's group and mm-hmm. it was around a bunch of guys that go to my church that was always keeping me accountable. And then left from there was I said, uh, I'm going to get a coach and someone that's going to help work with me. Then I'm going to get a mentor, someone that I could look to, someone that I could help mm-hmm. that's already been in, in situations ahead of me that could help guide me along too. Mm-hmm. So I implemented all of these different things in place to help keep me accountable, responsible, and to help change my life. And doing some of those things, started working on some things that's tied to like the decisions that I'm making, the direction I want to go in my life, and just the destination of where I wanted to be at in life. And aligning all three of those things helped me propel to where I'm at now today, man. So I find it interesting that, you know, the process you're talking about really took a took a took a path, right? It wasn't a, you know, I need to do this one thing to take care of this one thing. You were, you know, knocking down objectives to reach your goal to, you know, to where to where you are today. When you're coaching people, because that's one of the things you do is executive coaching and business coaching. Talk about how you talk to potential clients or current clients just about that process that there is no quick fix. There, there is no quick fix. What I find when working with people is you're you're here at the this side of the spectrum. And towards the end of the spectrum is your destination of where you're trying to be. And what causes a lot of issues that we have is we're out of alignment and we, we're a loss of our clarity. And a lot of people are always like trying to find their purpose, trying to find their missions or things that's attached to some of those things there. And then for me, when I work with clients, you know, obviously it's, I work on one-on-one or we do the 90 day programs, but for me, how I figured out what worked for me best is the same process and principles that I put in place to help work with clients. So I break it down under three different uh, under my framework. So right. I saw the decision, direction, and destination. And on the end of it, the spectrum is your destination and where you're at now. Mm-hmm. And the concept is around breaking the bottle. What's inside of the bottle that's keeping you away from your destination? So mm-hmm. we're going to ad- get to identify some of the things that you've been doing, some of the things that you need to start doing. Right. Then we're going to gain clarity on what you were doing before and then what you need to start doing now. Right. right? Then we're going to verify some things that's tied to some limiting beliefs some things that may be tied to like imposter syndrome, right? Mm-hmm. From there, when it comes to the direction, right? Now we need to get aligned, right? What are some things that we need to start doing, right? So we're going to start building. We're going to start creating. And then once we're going we're gonna to start establishing what that looks like, so you can have a clear blueprint of some of the things that you need to start doing as I coach you along to help you get those things right. accomplished. There's much more other sub layers of questions that's tied to that. Sure. But lastly, is the um, the destination piece of you actually getting there and seeing, envisioning what that actually looks like, right? right. So this is where you're going to gain that alignment, right? Putting things and structures in place to make sure that you stay there, right? Then we're going to work on things that's tied to the, like the proximity. What are the community you need to be in? Well, who are do you need to be around? Um, what are some things that you need to put in place, the networks of things that you need to right. keep that momentum that you just built, that you just worked on to keep on going. Right. And then lastly is the, the the last piece to that is the sustainability of what that looks like. So right. how do we maintain that? How do we keep that going? How do we keep on leveling up so you could be at your optimum peak performance as that high level CEO? So when you're, I guess when you're talking to entrepreneurs one of their characteristics right the mentality of people is they want to fix things right yes but, you know Recreative. it's like you know yeah i see a problem i want to fix it i want to take care of it but you know sometimes they're almost they're looking for a quick fix right i need to act immediately but a lot of what you're talking about requires a great deal of patience and planning yes that that's you know I, I, that's a gift that I think that I have is a, a lot of patience. And I come from the project management background, so mm-hmm. I like putting things in place to help you get through something. But sure. the beauty in the the patience is if you're willing to invest the time in yourself for ninety days, 
-hmm. You'll be surprised of the transformation that you'll see within yourself, the level of growth that you're gaining for yourself. So if you look at things in the grand scheme of things, are you willing to sacrifice three months, 90 days to get to the level of what you're trying to do? I did that. I, it, but it took me close to 10 years of sacrificing <laughs> things just to figure that out. Right. If I would have done that earlier and just sacrificed three months, imagine where my life could have been at. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I do understand that we we, we kind of think in the uh, the microwave day and age where things got to be quick, fast in a bottle and we got to get solutions right now. Right, right, but right. Things things does does not does not happen just like that uh, every single day. Not everyone just turns up to be a millionaire. If you if you think of most millionaires, they turn out to become millionaires in their forties and their fifties and things like that. You really yeah. have to like put in the work to actually get the results that you truly truly desire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because most businesses are, uh, you know, marathons, not sprints, right? Right. You know, when I was in uh, college, I I did the research on Walt Disney, right, and it took him years to right. build Walt Disney. It took some trial and error to build Walt Disney. Right. And now you see the big conglomerate of what it is now, right? right? And me and my wife was actually talking about this. This guy got, we talked about the different aspects of what Walt Disney is. He bought, he purchased land, mm -hmm. right? So he he had the construction side of things. Then he he decided who was who was going to be his audience. It was going to be kids, right? Mm -hmm. So he, he put all these different dynamics of what it was going to look like. Now you have, your Mickey Mouse, your Minnie Mouses, your cartoons, your now you have this uh, Disneyland, Disney World, all of these different things in this big spot because it was in Orlando. So we just thought about what does it, how does this guy put this business concept together mm -hmm. to get it to where it's at right now to the point mm -hmm. of it's so big and it's so massive, he has no competition. Right. Well, Universal Studios would would argue with that, but but no, it's interesting getting back to Walt Disney though as to sort of his journey, right? When he started, you know, as an animator. You know, no one was doing what he was doing. And I think when he started Walt Disney Studios, you know, he he mortgaged everything. He bet everything. Yes. Um, was not a a for sure. And I'm sure there was some other person out there um, who was around the same time frame who was trying to do the same thing who we never heard of because they didn't <laughs> succeed, right? That's right. So are, are, is, is Disney one of your uh, touchstones or hallmarks of the people that you think d did it well? Yeah, I think Disney did it well. You know, when I wrote the paper on what he did, I think whenever I look at things, I always look at like, how did people get past some of these adversities? What were some of the things that they put in place? What were some of the strategies that they put in place? And that was one of the um, companies, well, that the person or the brand that I said, man, um, if I could do it or want to look at, I always look at things like, I don't look at things in regards to like, uh, jealousy or envy i always look at things in regards to like how can i learn from this what can i take right. from this what can i extract from this to strive for, for uh, my my greatness within myself man so that was one of the companies that i did look at tell me about a little bit about your clients the type of people you talk to i i don't think bob Iyer from disney is one of your clients but can you talk about <laughs> the people who find you and uh you know talk about you know the, the scope of type of the businesses you talk to yeah, definitely. So I've well, I've worked with or I am working with as well, like some executives, like I'm working with like a president from another uh, university right now. But these clients that I come come in contact with, it's amazing because they connect with me because of some of the things that I've been through and I connect with them on. So when it comes to like the mental health issues, the depression, the anxiety, the suicide, or when I speak publicly about um, drinking and um, getting a DUI. I've spoken about getting molested as a kid and some of the things that I dealt with and carrying that mm -hmm. bottled up emotions and feelings and then sharing the steps and the processes and or the healing process, what it was like for me to get past that. So sure. just connecting with people on a human level is where um, I usually find and seek where their empathy is at to work with that client to get them to mm -hmm to the transformation that they're looking at. So I've worked with some presidents, some CEOs from some different companies. I've also worked with some um, people that are just normal people every single day, you know, and I, I, I did a speaking engagement and uh, this lady came up to me and she was like, thank you for sharing that. You know, um, I have a brother that's not in a comfortable space right now to be vulnerable and transparent and get past some of these things that he's dealing with right now. And mm -hmm. I think um, your program would help him. And uh, right. me and me and this woman uh, brother got on a call 
and we got him into the program because mm -hmm. this was something that he needed. Mm -hmm. I had someone listen to my podcast and they said, um, hey, we listened to episode number one and what you spoke about. And uh, I think uh, my brother would be a good candidate for this. So I had yeah. to work with this person's brother into my program. So for the most part, man, I've, I've seen um, a good bit of different uh, people from different areas or walks of this life to get to work with. But I, the beauty of what I love is just to see the transformation of me pouring into people and just to see them. The concept is always about breaking a bottle. So it's really breaking a bottle and just shattering all of these limiting beliefs, things that are holding them back in life. Mm -hmm. Because some of these people, when I when I meet with them, they're not going out of the house. They're staying home. They um, right. they're contemplating suicide. They're thinking, what what is in this world for me? I I'm a failure. I have not accomplished anything. And some of those things that are some deep, dark mm -hmm. struggles that people are actually dealing with right now, man. So I try to tap into that and help people get to their greatness. And you may be sounds to me like you're dealing with people who maybe appear outwardly successful. Right, like university president, business leader, and but on but they're dealing internally with some other stuff. That that's it. So that's how I I I, I uh, really tell people that things. So when I uh, got out of the military and I worked on a railroad, man, I was doing phenomenally phenomenally well. No one knew that I was going through a divorce. No one knew that I got a DUI. No mm -hmm. one knew that um, I was dealing with mental health and PTSD because when I showed up to work. I'm smiling, I'm happy, and I don't talk about those things. Right. But when I showed up for that guy that passed, that uh, tried to commit suicide, it hit me. Mm -hmm. it hit me on the job site. Right. You know, so that that's where you got to really connect with people and ask them, ask them deep questions to get to some of these things. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you have to develop a uh, level of trust with people to get them to be vulnerable and transparent and to talk about some of those things. Same thing occurred for me, man. I uh, When I was in Washington, D.C., I'm working, and all of a sudden, me and my wife have an issue, and that led to our second divorce, led to my second divorce. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to my job saying, hey, um, I'm going through a divorce, and we, we need to get out of this house. We need to sell this house. All of these things are tied into it. I'm going through a custody battle with my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. All of these things are tied into my job, but no one really knows about those things. But now it, mm -hmm. it poured into my job where it became an issue. Now I have to deal with some of these things. So these are real life issues that I was going through that I was dealing with. And I know many people are dealing with some of those same yeah. things now. And yeah. for that, I try to help them get through some of those situations. I mean, even as like a coworker, right? You may be working with somebody and, you know, they're seeing they're having a bad day and you have no idea what they brought in, right? Mm -hmm. Do you work with businesses like that where you're like, hey, how can I be a better coworker or a better team member for a business? Yes, I do. Actually, I, I just did my TED Talk, right? And after my TED Talk, there was other speakers that was there. And I spoke about uh, mental health and I was speaking about unemployment and I was speaking about the homelessness within the veteran community. And a lady came up to me and she said that, you know, I work with over 300 businesses and she said a problem that I find is that uh, the veteran community within some of these workplaces, there's a high turnover rate with some of the veterans that are there because they're other people's coworkers. But some of the feedback that they're getting is those veterans within those workplaces are dealing with something. You could tell they're dealing with something, right? but there's no one there within that workplace to connect with them and help them with that. Right. And what you find out is the attrition rate of the those veterans that's within the company, they come in and they, they turn out to be very good employees, but after a while, something happens and they leave. After right. a while, something happens. And what it is, sometimes it's they go, they come to work, they go home and drink. They come right. to work, they're dealing with mental health issues. They come to work, then they have the, they're dealing with like kids issues, divorce issues, and things like that. And then eventually, something has to give. So, where can people go for more information? I mean, you you mentioned your podcast, um, so definitely want to talk uh, mention that, and also maybe your website or how people reach out to learn more about your programs. Definitely. So, for people to learn more about the Adversity Academy and our personal development program or our business development program, they could go to www.theadversityacademy.com. Or you can send me an email directly at mallison at theadversityacademy.com. 
Great. Well, listen, Michael, it's great to meet you. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your story. I know you've shared it many times, but I appreciated hearing it from you. And I know uh, you've overcome a lot. And I appreciate you uh, sharing that with our audience. Man, Gary, I appreciate the opportunity, brother. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.